Welcome to day 11 of 30 days of Lightroom. Today, we're gonna to show you how to create stunning images using HDR. Hey there, and welcome to our series where we teach you literally everything you need to know about Lightroom Classic in 30 days. And today we're focusing on creating an HDR photo. Now, an HDR photo is super cool. Basically, this is a combination of multiple different photographs to create one image that has more information than each of those photos would have individually. And this is gonna give us a beautiful detail in our highlights, midtones, and shadows. So a camera is really powerful, but a lot of the times it can't capture all of the information in a scene. So that's why sometimes you'll see the sky is a little bit too bright, or maybe the shadows are a little bit too dark. So an HDR photo aims to help you overcome that barrier. Now there's a step before we get into Lightroom, there's a step you're gonna need to take and that's with your camera. You're gonna wanna make sure you actually take photographs that are underexposed, properly exposed, and overexposed. Now you can do this manually on your camera simply by moving some dials. You can also go into your settings and choose a bracketed exposure, which will do this automatically. So if you're shooting with like a modern mirrorless camera, there's gonna be an option for bracketed exposure. And then you can have options for like how far underexposed, properly exposed, and overexposed. And different cameras will have like so many settings. Some cameras will allow you to take like nine photos at up to three stops of different exposure. So there's a lot you can do there within your camera. But today we're focusing on the software component. So let's say you've already taken those pictures. Now we're gonna go into the software and show you how to do it. By the way, I do recommend if you are able to shoot this on a tripod, it's gonna help the software merge these together. If you don't have a tripod, just hold your camera really, really still, because it's gonna actually try to combine multiple photos. So the closer those images are together, like, like physically the camera has to stay in the same place, the software is gonna have an easier time getting that done. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom. So here we have two photos. Now you guys can download these and follow along. You're gonna see these are actually raw photographs. So we have two photos. I'm just switching back and forth between them now. And you're gonna see they're in the exact same place. So these are different photographs. The camera was on a tripod. So one photograph is underexposed. And you can see we have great information here outside, right? I see the nice sky, I see these buildings and things like that. But the interior is underexposed. So in my next photo, which is brighter, the interior looks great, but outside, I don't have much detail in the sky and these buildings and things like that, okay? So this is how we're gonna start. We've got two different images. We wanna combine them together so we get the best of both worlds. Now, in this case, I've got two different images. You can do this with two or more. You can do this with up to like, I've done it up to nine photos as well. So like as long as you have many different photos that capture the light information of your scene, you can combine them all. So we're gonna shift click on both of these images. We're gonna right click and then I'm gonna go to photo merge and we're gonna go here to HDR. All right, photo merge and HDR. We're gonna have a HDR merge preview here. It's gonna create our little preview and we're gonna talk about our settings. So you can see already this looks really good. I have information here in the, on the inside, I can see everything looks really good and on the outside. So we have a couple options here. You wanna make sure you click on auto align and auto settings. I do recommend clicking on both of these. Auto align is gonna make sure if your camera moved a little bit, it's gonna align those images a little bit better. Auto settings will just kind of adjust your exposure. You can adjust those after the fact as well, but I think it's a good idea to start with auto. Now here where we see D ghost, what is that mean? Well, let's say you have like a tree in your photograph and the tree is moving a little bit in the wind. In one picture, the tree is gonna be over here and the other picture, the tree is gonna be over here. So what this de-ghosting in mount is gonna do is instead of like trying to combine those two pictures of the trees and they're in slightly different places, it's gonna figure out what it needs to overlap and it's gonna make it look like one tree basically. So you're not gonna have like what's called ghosting of like faint, like hat, you know, kind of what two trees, but it's actually supposed to be the same tree. So what, <laughs> I hope I explained that well. What de-ghosting amount does, basically if there's movement in your photo, it's going to like cancel out that movement and make it look a lot better. So I recommend just going to medium here always. And then I'm gonna have it create a stack, which is just gonna stack my original exposures together and then produce that HDR. All right, so let's go ahead and hit merge right over here. And you're gonna see it's gonna go to creating our HDR up on the top. Now remember, it's gonna stack these together, okay? 
So we can click right up here where we see the stack. I can click and open that up. So here I have my original photograph. Here I have, well, both of my original photographs are right here. And then here is the HDR. Let's go ahead and double click on this. You can see it's renamed it. We have HDR.DNG. And now if I zoom in, look at this. I have all the detail from the outside and all the detail from the inside. So like literally I have a perfect exposure. Now, if you want this, in this case, I think it could actually be a little bit brighter. We're gonna still go into our develop module here. There we go. And I have all of my settings that, remember when we hit auto settings back in our dialogue, it basically just moved these around, but you can still move these around. Like if you want your shadows to be a little bit brighter, you can do that. If you want your overall exposure to be a little bit brighter, like it's a nice architectural image. I think the exposure could be a little bit brighter, but I'm bringing my highlights down. I still have detail inside and outside. And I think this image looks really, really good. And a lot of the time you don't have to do much because like literally you're combining the exposure of two different photographs. So you get the best of all the information combined into one. So with very little settings here, you can see that, of course, this looks, I'm just gonna shift click these and hit N for survey view, and then just hit shift tab. So you can see, this is the original overexposed image, a little bit too bright. You can't see really information outside. This is the original underexposed information where we can see the outside. And then this is the HDR, they combine them together and we have the best of both worlds. We have a perfect exposure. All of the detail outside and inside you can see is perfect. I have yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's really just the preference. So this is so, so handy. You can see just how easy it is to do in software. So the real key here is gonna be when you're photographing a scene, try to take a bracketed exposure, underexposed, properly exposed, and overexposed. This is gonna be especially helpful if you're photographing landscapes. Anytime I'm photographing a landscape, I take multiple exposures because when I combine them together, it looks so much better. Architecture, you definitely wanna combine exposures. If you're photographing a person, it can be a little bit more difficult because people tend to move, but if the person stays really, really still, you can still use this technique as well. So next time you're out there and you wanna make sure you get all of the detail of your scene, make sure to capture a bracket exposure under properly and overexposed, and then come into Lightroom, just a couple of clicks away, and you'll get a stunning image. Alrighty, thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you tomorrow. We're picking up with more Lightroom knowledge. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.